Here we go. Thanks, lady. I like when she says that. Hey, everybody. It's Patty Dobrovolsky with Up Your Creative Genius. Oh, God, that my head is like exploding because I have Ram Castillo here. You, you, you are not going to believe what an amazing rock star he is. Like this guy is a design director. He's a two-time author. He's a speaker. You know, he teaches an instructor on creative live. He's a decision-making business coach, and he's worked with some of the biggest brands, some of your favorite brands, let's just say, um, you know, Louis Vuitton and Herman Miller and Olga Via Mather and DDB and Toyota. And it goes on and on and not just that, but he has his own podcast, which I am so grateful that you're here because you're up to number 88 in your podcast and you have interviewed some big names, Kelly Slater, right? Naomi Simpson, Kevin O'Leary, these people, and the interviews are spectacular. And what you really do is help designers who are tuning in, this is my understanding of it, tuning in to help them step into the future they desire. So this is where we aligned, we met on Clubhouse. Ram, thank you so much for being here. Patty, what an introduction. I'm deeply honored to be here. Thank you so much. You're just so incredible. So just, whoa. So tell, tell me, like, what are you doing right now? First, tell people who, from your perspective, what you do right now, and then roll me back in time to how you got to where you are right now. So whichever way you want to start, if you want to start in the past, you want to start in the present and go to the past. I'd love it. Either way, our listeners are going to want to know all. They're going to want to get inside <laughs> your world right now. Sure. Okay. So the short answer is right now, I am building my advisory board portfolio. And okay. what that means is I am uh, doing a bit of coaching, a bit of consulting, but advisory, it sits in this mix of uh, giving advice to business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, organizations, and leaders um, in the specialty that I've been able to accumulate over that last 16 year career yeah. uh, in the uh, world of um, marketing communications, creative strategy, and most importantly, uh, human centered design. Yeah. And uh, that's the short answer because I climbed up that world of starting at Ogilvy, which is traditional advertising. That's and then right. Working my, my way through other agencies, all the way up to uh, head of head of digital design at Saatchi and Saatchi, servicing Amex, Qantas, Toyota, wow. uh, building teams. And, and when you go through that path, you're exposed to processes, people, uh, tools, systems, and just the different uh, ways that businesses need to operate in terms of capability in delivering their promise to customers and designing a customer experience that is meaningful, uh, wow. that is actually valuable. So taking all that enterprise learning and yes. helping small to medium sized business owners uh, through advisory sessions and workshops, that's what I'm doing right now. That's fantastic. And I think that um, entrepreneurs, they don't really have a sense of that, what it requires of you. But what we're talking about are the long hours <laughs> and the access to creative ideas, which you are famous for. I mean, you've been written up for some of the ideas you came up with or your team came up with. It's just incredible. And I have a feeling that you're paths have crossed with my nephew, John Dobrovolsky, because he worked at Toyota, some of these places, and now he works at Grail, right? And so he's head of design there. So I love that you're doing this in this space where you're sharing and you're pouring into other people your wisdom. Now, I met you on Clubhouse because you were in a room that I was in, um, and maybe I was in with Pete Cohen, I'm not sure, but tell me what, what, are you what what are you doing on Clubhouse? And are you there running any of your own rooms? Because you're so incredible. I would be surprised if you weren't. So I we, we did meet on Clubhouse via Pete Cohen. Um, he and I met on there as well. And then uh, he heard me speak about uh, the importance of personal branding and positioning yes. yourself. Uh, hence the the duck on his head. Uh, yes, you know and. And so um, 
I have found that Clubhouse is just a, a treasure chest. Uh, the ways that I've benefited have blown me away. So I, we're talking right now, it's mid-November mid, mid 2021. I started day one mid-January 2021. So we're talking yes. you know, 10 months or so ago. Me too. Um, same same amount of time. Yes. There you go. And yeah, and I, right around that time, it was just just starting to blow up. Really, I mean, yes. people would say it had blown up before, but it really at that beginning, uh, people Absolutely. found out about it. I, I initially uh, went on there just to test. So, coming from a design background, it's important to never assume that that's one of the key things. It's important right. to to go through an understanding phase, and a lot of that is just testing and absorbing and gathering information. So for the first three months, I was just gathering information, seeing how the tool works, how it could benefit myself and others. Uh, yes. And what I quickly found was that there was the ability to get access, number one, to people that I would never oh. have been able to, to access. So true. Um, you. Maybe not never. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, Patty, right? Um, and just... I think, so that's a stretch, you know, we would probably, I would access them in some way, but the speed of yeah. accessing them. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the, the relationship building and rapport building um, is more real in many ways because you're just not influenced by any other factors such as, you know, seeing their face, you just get yep. to hear their voice and you get a real sensibility about them straight away. Yes. So I've been able to uh, invest in many deals. Uh, I, that part of the advisory is also, you know, looking at how I might be able to invest in companies um, should I wish to do that. So yes, whatever you're looking for, you'll be able to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would, I would yeah. totally agree. I mean, I just had the most amazing conversations and you know, that I never, I don't think I would have ever probably met um, Rob Moore or even known who he was really John Lee, people like this that were, are in there. And then also badass boss. I mean, I've been in rooms where people <laughs> have just blown my mind to pieces and uh, just listening. And you know what, what you're talking about is, so you, you were seeking to understand, which is really a design thinking principle. So for listeners that aren't um, familiar with that whole process, but you really seek to understand what the experience is about and what customers are actually having in that experience. And, uh, and it really is incredible. Now, so did, did, is that a place where you have been able to um, get some new clients from there, yeah, for example? Absolutely. So, so I'll, I'll swing the needle to this point, Patty, just to contextualize all this. Um, the reality is that everyone of us has a brand. We already yes. have a brand that exists. And how I define brand and personal branding in particular is what people attach meaning to. It's your personality, your credibility, your reputation. And yep. the, 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 the thing that I love about Clubhouse is that you're able to close that gap of saying what you do and doing what you say. And in a world where trust is becoming harder and harder to build and, and trust is, being, is getting harder and harder to come by, Yes. Um, it's being eroded all the time. You know, any, any belief that there's good out there, you know, you have to really pff, watch out. Right. Right. So like, you know, prior to clubhouse, which is a social audio app um, we've had on, you know, a, an immense amount of, of Instagram dominance, so to speak, um, where we're able to yeah. get to know this person that we follow that, you know, we might maybe aspire to, or we learn yeah. from, or just simply are entertained by. Um, but at, at the heart of it, where we weren't really able to dive deep into like this storytelling one-on-one -on -one and, and, and throw questions back at the person so easily. And, you know, having, uh, having clubhouse, I, I've found that we're able to get to this important thing, which is the, the personal branding piece that, the space that you occupy in the hearts and minds of people, your audience yes. relative to your competitors. And, and so when 
we're able to understand um, the, the space with which we have established some equity and we can grow that equity, it can really help your business, your career progression, the future you want to design. Because yes. until you're able to really pinpoint, you know, what is it that you're known for? What is it that you can build upon that to be liked enough to be trusted? Yes. Then no matter if you're doing business or just building relationships, um, you don't have a compass. And so it's, it's important to find, in my opinion, yes. what is the thing that you're able to leverage and build uh, equity with, and then strategically partner and pair the right people to help you get there. Yes, yes, um, I love this because it really does start with you. And when you can get uh, a platform of some kind, I mean, and that's what I tell people, you know, the only way that I ever became such a well-known speaker was because I gave the TED Talk, I totally nailed it. And it wasn't even on that platform where it blew up. It was on a bootleg platform five years later where somebody said it was the best of whatever, whatever year it was. And then 6 million people, right? And that, to me, that's the power of Clubhouse. In one moment, you can say something that someone will hear um, or you can do something. And this, this reminds me too of Clubhouse is it really is about giving away what you know to people and then really giving it away. Like I give away sessions to people that I think, you know, if you just did a session with me for two hours, I think it would explode your business. And I, and so I'm willing to do that because I'm in a place where I've created the, um, the client base such that I can give some things away. And I've also met some amazing clients there. And, and part of that, I think you're talking about, so you, you understand your brand and who you are that builds then this line of trust or this bridge of trust to a potential customer or even a person that's going to be your friend. Right. And then you get to um, reap the benefit of meeting them. Yeah. And, and what we're really talking about here as well, it's, and, and, and this is the why I love you, Patty, and your podcast title, especially, is because if you don't have the overlap, and this is one framework that I have created to find your competitive advantage, it's so simple, but it's two circles on a page overlapping over each other, these, these circles. On the left, it has the word appealing, question mark. So what's appealing? Yes. And on the right, it's competitive uh, sorry on the right it's it's exclusive question mark so what's exclusive and until you find something appealing and exclusive enough then you don't have a competitive advantage oh and my you gosh need to have a competitive advantage otherwise yes. you can't compete in a market that's either being serviced well how are you going to compete and this is yes. why creativity is such an important differentiator well, and I, I would, and this creative genius part, right? That's what you're talking about. You're talking about it's creativity, but it's also accessing your creative genius. And that yes. is accessible to anybody. And that is, you know, the myth is that some people are creative. Uh, um, Ram is creative, Patty's creative, but I'm not. And that's a myth because we're all born with our imagination. And here's the kicker to all of this, Patty. When I buy you or choose to follow you wherever you're leading me, yes, I'm subconsciously asking, what does that make me? So when I buy wow. when I buy a Tesla, right, out of all the vehicles that I can buy to, to move me as a physical human from yes. A to B to C, I yes. can buy any transportation vehicle. But I choose Tesla because in the back of my mind, whether you admit it or not, the person that has bought it also is pro-tech, wants to make a statement that they are uh, a supporter yes. of uh, other um, energy resource, in this case, something a bit more sustainable like electricity, and is also yeah. wanting to yeah. have that title of I'm an innovative person. 
Yes. And so when I buy you, I'm always asking, what does that make me? Because you're an extension of my worldview. Yes. And, and this, um, so when you think about that, like to me, this is like how the, um, the universe works, right? Um, when we think about that, we're a big energy field out there and you think about all of the little sparks of light that are all of us, the way that you spark your spark and magnetize people who are like you is by being your true and authentic self and finding what it is that you offer that nobody else offers. And that's really all it takes for you to, to build your brand is that you have to know that. And then you have to help, help people in some way, just add the help element, which that for you seems like a big piece of it. Like I watched a bunch of your um, talks, you know, and you're so generous in how you are on stage. You really are a great speaker and you're funny and people just love, love coming up to you. You can just feel it, right? It's great and it's powerful. But what is it that you feel in your world that you're here to do? What are you here to do? What's your purpose right now? So my, my why has always been and currently still serves me well as leading with generosity and following with care. And the reason why I say that, Patty, is because when I get asked this definition of what my version of success is, I still arrive at this answer, which is success to me is how well I go to sleep at night because yeah. I've had a little and I've had a lot. And I'll, and I'll loop this into some tangibility, but I've had a little and I've had a lot. I've had everything in between, you know, granted yeah. I'm a Filipino immigrant. My mom is one of five. Her dad wasn't really ever around her mom. My grandmother had to have a little corner store and then have a sewing machine just to raise five kids. My dad's one of 11 wow. and his father passed away when he was only three. So he grew up without a father the majority of his life. And then his wow. mom passed away when he was at uni and he graduated marine transportation, mechanical engineering, just to get out, as with yes. most Filipinos back, back in the day, especially, get to Australia. And those two degrees at a top university were not recognized. Of course. And so he raises three kids. I'm in the middle. And I have this worldview of going, huh, I could have lived that life. A life yes. where they only had a yes. tablespoon of peanut butter and a bit of bread to share for the day, often. My mom got so thirsty that she, at six years old, she opened the cupboard, sculled a, a bottle of soy sauce, and now she's traumatized because <laughs> she's she didn't know it was soy sauce, you know. So there are these things here in, in place where where we go back now to your original question, you know, about you know what what is it that is, um, you know, what is my big why? What is my purpose? What is the thing for me? I didn't know it would look like going on uh, two global speaking tours, uh, yeah. you know, writing two books, starting a, a top ranking podcast and connecting with so many people. Um, I didn't know it would look like that because I didn't have a Well, rigid... you didn't have that view of what was possible, really. A hundred percent. Yeah. But at the heart of it, I knew that. And, and when people, and this might not be the, the um, intrinsic motivation of, of most people, I don't know, I can only speak for myself, but deep right. down, I knew that I felt joy and at peace. And, and, and I recently did a talk about um, two talks. One was called don't aim to make a million dollars, aim to help a million people. Right. Uh, and that the irony is the money will come. The other talk I did recently, which lands this point around what we're talking about here is that uh, being wealthy doesn't necessarily mean being rich, that being wealthy is about overcoming uh, obstacles and they're the, the, the treasures that you yeah. get. You get another coin of resilience. You get another coin of humility. You get another coin of persistence, you get another coin of um, of work ethic and respect and, and whatever it is that you gain. So I'm- And love and trust. And love and trust and yes, 100%. So for me, it's not, it's less about going 
and 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 saying I I need to and I'm all about goals as well. I I I think it should of be, course you know, of smart, course because measurable. you're really <laughs> you're all about making good decisions, good business decisions that are right good for your business in the long run, right? So Absolutely. yeah, so but I love it. You're talking about the journey and the collection of the coins that you get, um, that the challenges that you face, right? Or that your parents faced, or my parents or grandparents faced, you know, my grandmother was an immigrant. My father was poor growing up in Chicago. They're both my mother and father's parents, you know, fathers died when they were seven. That was interesting to experience, um, for them. And then for me to go, uh, become a therapist and then have to interview them about that and think about, oh, what was the transmission of pathology at age seven for me, right? <laughs> when they were, ah. so, um, but I think that this coin, this collection of coins um, is underrated. It's underrated by most people because they see coin and wealth as how much you have in your bank account or what your, what your capacity is. Um, but it is in the moments where you're truly yourself, um, up against the hardest things and that you pushing through it, uh, like, like you did and that the genetic encoding in your, um, your genes, your family, they did that I think carries us forward into a future that we desire more than money and more than fame and more than all those things. So, so I love that you're saying this now, you must have hit some really big challenges in your career and in your life. What kinds of things did you have to come up against in yourself? You came from that kind of a background. So, you know, um, that, that can make for a very small voice in a room full of very loud people sometimes, right? Absolutely. So a uh, few key obstacles that have really shaped <laughs> how I have gone about life. Uh, in primary school, I was bullied quite badly. I had my arm broken three times and got 16 oh. stitches before the age of 11. I was the shortest kid in school, um, never the most athletic, never the most wealthy, as I said, in terms of financial wealth. I was never the most um, intelligent. I was always sort of very, very average in, in, or below. I was only great at art, funnily enough. Um, and and I go. remember my mum cooking spaghetti in our small apartment. We were, uh, I was about four years old. I would collect empty tissue boxes, toilet paper rolls, and I would make stuff. We obviously didn't have devices back then. Yeah. And she said, Ram, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then I go, I don't know, mum, I just want to make stuff. Yeah. And then she put her hand on my shoulder and she stopped cooking. She said, well, remember, whatever you want to be, make sure you dream big, make sure you dream much, much bigger. So although I had these obstacles, yes. I, she gave me permission to just bloody go for it. You know, there's no, yeah. you know, I love that, that Ted talk by Ken Robinson. And there was yes. that bit in his, and he sadly passed away at age of 70 last year, of course. But there was this one bit where he said that there was a girl, she was six years old. She was always um, very um, unattentive. She, she didn't have concentration. One time she did in drawing class and the teacher came up. She said, hey, what are you drawing? And she said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And then the, the teacher said, well, how? That's not possible. No one knows what God looks <laughs> like. And then the, the child said, well, they will in a minute. Yeah, exactly. And, and the point was that they, they weren't afraid to try. As children, yeah. we weren't frightened to try to just give it a go. And so my mum instilled that in me at a young age. So despite the obstacles, and I wasn't a formally trained writer, I was able to write two books. Even in my first book, when I went to 20 different publishers and sponsors, and I tried to get funding for it or something, and then eventually... Um, I, I was like, well, work another job and self-fund it yourself and yeah, just, yeah, just get it out exactly. there. Exactly. I did that. And American Institute of Design in the States were like, wow, you know, you're doing great things. Why don't we host you? We've got 72 chapters. We'll host you for a speaking tour. Oh, I've never that's spoken so... in front of crowds before. I'd never done that. Oh my gosh. I just thrown myself to plant many seeds, not yes. knowing which will blossom. But yes. sometimes it's a numbers game too. Patty, I get people, you know, in, in finishing university in college and then they're like, Ram, 
it's been four months. I haven't gotten a job. I've finished my degree. And I was like, well, how many emails have you sent out? How many people have you reached out to? How many That's LinkedIn right. messages have That's you right. had? And they're like, oh, like I sent out like 15 emails, <laughs> 15 emails. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I sent 300 emails in the first week and exactly. I got a job in the, in the mail room. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking, uh, you know, one of my first interviews was Jonathan Javier and he, he tells people what he did on LinkedIn. You know, he would send out hundreds of emails and notes to people in LinkedIn every week until he was able to get the connections that he did. And then he posts these pictures from where, he, and he just is amazing. Right. But it takes this grit and courage and persistence. You know, I think probably I wanted to be a keynote speaker long before. I mean, I, I never dreamed I would be on Broadway. I never dreamed that I would be a keynote speaker for, you know, on a stage of 4,000 people that just, you know, the thought that that would be part of my reality. Um, just, I didn't even know future me it was way ahead of me. And I was way back in the past in this limited sphere of, can somebody call me right now? And then I'll just go and do it for a couple hundred dollars, you know, and this is, but this is where you start. And then you learned through doing and working and, and doing, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm all about 500%. If I can do give you 500% of what you've asked for then you're going to want to have me back. No doubt. Or you're going to say something about that to somebody else. And I think Absolutely. there's, there's something about, you know, really, and I think this is true for you. Like when I look at all the big brands that you've worked with, you know, you started out in advertising and we know what a grind that is. That is a grind, right? <laughs> and then oh, yeah. you got to this place now where you're, you're an expert in brand and so many other things. So what, what other things are you fascinated by now? And what are you looking, looking for in your own career and also out there in the horizon to see if you can't tap into it? So here's the thing, everything that we've, we've spoken about here, Patty has kind of tied back to that theme about um, creativity and wealth and designing the future that you want, it is only as successful as how many internal treasures that we're looking to acquire and to turn that into external change. And so we need to mm, not say more about at, that, get that, unpack that for people. Cause that is, so you're saying something very deep there. I want everybody who's listening to get this, the internal treasures to impact and transforming external. that yeah. and turning that into impact. External change is one of that version, right? Acquiring internal treasures for external change because we need to look at back to the coin um, analogy. Yes. We, we need to look at that as a point of difference. We need to look at that. And what's creativity? It's great. Creativity is putting something that's different and new and something that requires new means that you, we need to look at testing, exploring, trying stuff. Yep. And you get this weird, strange, but interesting combination. And that's you. Yeah. That's you. No one's walked your steps. Yes. No one's grown up the same with the same parents mixed with this education, mixed with this life experience, A, B, C, D. Yes. It's a, it's a combination that's unique to you. There's already a, 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 a Anthony Robbins, an Oprah Winfrey, a Brene Brown, a Marie Folio, a Gary Vaynerchuk. There's already so yes. many yes. of them, but we don't have one of you. Right. And this is what happens. It's not just about believing for belief's sake. And so now I look at it as being very popular to a few, yes. right? In whatever you're doing means accepting that we're going to be very unpopular to the other end and be very, and we're going to be very neutral to the majority. And this is why I think people are not pursuing the fullness of their gifts and they're not going down the truth, the rabbit hole. It's because yeah. they're trying to please everyone. Yes. Oh my gosh. This is like, um, 
This is uh, the best uh, marketing tip you could give to anybody. Right now, this is it because there are people that will throw shade and you can't please them. No matter what you do, it's not going to happen. And then there are people who, who don't really care. They, they're just, they're living their life um, just on this flat line um, way. No harm, no foul. But then there are a few people who are really expansive and they're expanding what they're doing into places that they are afraid and maybe scared and they're not sure what to do, but they know they're excited and they're passionate about life. And they understand that life is about experience. It's Hi, not I'm just about you, product, but it's about experience, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one really interesting example, real quick story. Yes. Uh, we're in the pandemic, of course, we're still in that. I used to go to the gym a lot. I switched to an outdoor sport that I've never tried called tennis. Okay. I'm in my mid <laughs> I, 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 I was gonna say, you're not gonna say pickleball, are you? That's gonna scare me. Okay, good. Yeah, tennis, yeah. a few. Okay. So tennis, right? <laughs> and so I'm in Sydney and we got a lot of sun, we got a lot of tennis courts, right? Yep. Big, big tennis community here, but I'm new. Definitely. To the sport. I signed up mid last year. So in June, July, 2020, I pick up a racket for the first time in my mid thirties. Okay. So I'm learning tennis. I start documenting, posted videos, <laughs> posted some YouTube videos, this and that. There's this coach here in Sydney that finds these videos. He's got a Spanish accent. He ends up DMing me and he goes, wow, I'd love to learn. I saw your tennis videos. I'd love to learn about entrepreneurship and design and digital media, the whole thing. I go, well, I'm learning tennis. Why don't we do a value exchange? You teach me, I'll teach you. <laughs> Happy days. So we start teaching each other. He's <laughs> teaching me tennis. And then after the tennis lesson, and by the way, he grew up with Rafael Nadal. His oh, father wow. works for Babalat, oh the whole thing. It was just amazing. Yes, yes. Okay? So this is what right. I'm saying about putting yourself <laughs> out there. Now, talk about one crazy seed planting <sighs> um, activity. Yeah. I said, all this stuff I'm teaching about business and entrepreneurship, we should apply it to something so that it lands, so that it's not just theory. So let's start a little side hustle just as a project <laughs> and let's do it. And he goes, I'm down. I said, his name's Andy. I go, where is, where is an opportunity in the marketplace? I've got insights being not in the tennis world that might be valuable. And you have insights being in the tennis world for, you know, over like 25 years. Yes. And then what we came to arrive at going back to the design thinking, which is about empathy first, it's about defining the problem that needs to be solved, yes. prioritizing that, then it's moving into um, ideating, prototyping, testing, and then um, deploying that in the market. So I said to him, you know what, to learn tennis as an adult, you've only got two options, one hour private lesson, yes. one hour group, which is only about four people or so. That's but right. There's nothing really like three hours boot camp style. Mm. Uh, I go, there's summer camps, but they're for kids and they're like a week or two weeks. I go, let's try that. Three hour boot camps for beginner adults. We posted it on Eventbrite. I'm Patty. sure that you sold out in a second. Sold out. 24 yeah. hours, 100, 100 bucks a ticket, 10 people max, and sold out. We're like, huh? Let's post another date up and see if anyone bites. <laughs> Posted another one, sold out within another 24 hours. We're like, huh, I wonder what else. Let's do a serving specific one. Posted that, that sold out. Long and the short of it, what, what started just as an idea is now a fully fledged business, right? And, and this is what I'm saying. I'm not even from the tennis world. Exactly. I've never not been in the, and <laughs> introduced to tennis as a child, right? I'm, right. I'm new to this. Yes. And yet yes. I was able, talking about creativity, talking about mixing yes. and matching a combination that is going to be equity in that idea. I love that. And the other piece that you added to this was a value exchange, which I think this is often underrated. People don't realize how easy, you know, that's how I met Pete Cohen, value exchange. I came and gave a talk and then we went and worked together. We did all this stuff in Europe and then, you know, just all the time, 
this value exchange exists out there for you as a possibility anytime that you put yourself out there because you did this first. You thought, okay, I think I'll document this because why not? It seems crazy enough to do, right? So you you posted it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever you did. You like struggling with the racket and the stuff and then getting some stuff down. And then this person sees you because uh, he, he watched all the videos, right? Of you doing it. Where'd you put it on YouTube? Must have been on yeah, YouTube. Just on too, YouTube right? and on my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so there. Just documenting my learning journey. That's right. And that's what we're hungry for is people learning, being vulnerable, and starting out. Because all of us, A, we want to learn something new. B, most of us are afraid to try because we think, oh, I don't know. Could I be any good in that? But I've always wanted to. And then somebody comes along and posts something where they're doing the thing and we think, Hey, if that guy could do it and he's really short, I think I could do it too. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So that that's fantastic. I love that. And, and just, then just it became that, a business, just on that, right? Patty, absolutely. And just on that, Patty, what we're really talking about here as well is around um, going back to that point about when I buy or follow or am connected to you as a fan or, or whatever customer yes. does, you know, I, I, can see myself in you. And there's a really important piece here, which is I can trust you enough to go where you're taking me. Trust is only possible with safety. Now, if I'm being vulnerable and I'm saying I'm, I'm learning and I'm showing you my mistakes, I'm yes. documenting it, I feel safe. And when I feel safe, the only way I can get that is if there's familiarity. And the only way that there's familiarity is with consistency. And the only way that there's consistency is with repetition. So repetition, showing up, even when you don't see results straight away, will yes. lead to consistency. So I'll go back the other way. Repetition, consistency, familiarity, safety, trust. That's right. And all of that equals success over time. You know, people, they'll say to you, you know, I like that person that said, you know, I, I've spent four months or three months since I graduated and I haven't gotten a job. And you're like, how many, how many emails did you send out? Well, 10 a week. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Get real <laughs> and get into the present moment because we're talking about 7 billion people online right now. So you are just invisible in that until you make yourself visible. And how do you do that? You do that through repetition and consistency and then vulnerability. And then over that, that builds trust. And I'm using my own words here, but this is what we're talking about. That's the bridge to someone else. And that bridge becomes friendship. It becomes client relationship. It becomes value exchange. It becomes love. It becomes network expansion all of that. But part of that is about you risking. You have to take a risk and put yourself out there. This is how you create change in your life is what you're talking about is that you, you get an idea and you could shelve that idea and you could ask people if you should do that idea, which often will bring shade on your idea. And then you don't want to do it. Or you can go out and you can find people that want to try an idea or want to expand something. And then yeah. there you go. And, and, and one of the things that I often suggest to people, Patty, because we're talking about not just, you know, throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks for no reason. That's right. Right. We, we need, we, we, what we're really also talking about is designing the future that you desire and tapping into yes. your creative genius. And what might that be? Sure. There's a bit of, there's, there needs to be experimentation to all this, but there's also that bigger question, which is, and I, and for, for all of you listening, I suggest you, you finish this sentence and really write it down. Don't let it live in your head. But my vision for a better world is, and so for me, my vision for a better world is one with more designers, entrepreneurs, and problem solvers because that is what the world needs. So now how it lives, I'm not so tied to. If I have to 
go on and, and explore this speaking thing or this writing thing or this podcasting thing or this YouTube documenting thing. Yeah. It's less about that. I'm willing to try those things if they meet the vision, the purpose, because if the purpose isn't there, then the product doesn't matter. That's right. If the purpose is for you to make a whole a million dollars, it's not the same as if the purpose is to expand and move women into technology or to show people all around the world that if you draw a picture of your vision that you and take action on it, you can increase your chance of f- by 42%. These are the things that will drive you that you can help people with. And the helping other people is the expansive element. It is the, to me, the creative genius equation, right? The equation is around imagination and intuition and desire and drive, but it leads you to outcome to the infinite power. Then outcome to the infinite power is I live and I serve the universe. And what I do is to live my biggest self and serve at the highest level, right? And that's what you're doing right now, which to me is so amazing. You're pulling together these people into your podcast. And also I'm sure that, you know, I see the photos of you in design sessions with people to design and develop new ideas and expand them. And I just, I love that because we're creating a new world every second. And you really are. What, what, um, what is it that fascinates you right now? What are you fascinated with that's happening out there that you're looking at and you go, hmm, that's interesting. I kind of like that. Or, hmm, is it this value exchange? Is it, what is it? <laughs> so the first thing that comes to mind that fascinates me right now is how low the bar is for convenience and what up let me contextualize this um it's so easy to be inconvenienced now yeah okay so i it myself i had to fill up the petrol you know put petrol in my car and there was one car in front of me and i i rarely drive but um you know we had i'd gone for a long drive the other day and there was one car in front of me and then I started to feel impatient. Yes. Um, I also realized that because we were locked down in Sydney for a good four months. Oh, yeah. You so. couldn't even, you know, people had to be in a place for a month before you were actually able to go home if you flew into the country. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we had like four, four, four months of lockdown. We had uh, one hour uh, was the max that you're allowed to go outside and only for specific things. If there was cops all around that would get like five thousand dollar fines um there was curfew the whole thing so wow. i didn't even have to leave my couch technically i could order yes. my groceries and i actually enjoyed going yeah. to the groceries yeah. you know and now i'm <laughs> yeah. comfortable enough i don't even need to like do anything <laughs> like it's the convenience yes is is so low now yeah so it's easy to be inconvenient so i'm fascinated yeah. by yes the lack of the lack of voluntary delayed gratification. Yes. Oh, and there's opp- M G wait, <laughs> the lack of involuntary um, gratification, right. Of that uh-huh. waiting. you nobody yes. wants to wait anymore for anything. You don't want to wait for the a lack job. Of, the lack of yeah. voluntary voluntary. Yes. yes. Sorry. Like, voluntary. Like for example, um, if I'm, if I'm, you know, uncomfortable and, and I'm agitated, yeah. it's like, it's like, that means there's no consequence, Patty. Yeah. You see, it's like, if I can't get this right now, then I'll blow um, up. I can, I'm going to blow up. Behave fuse. this way. Yeah, yes. Exactly. I'll just blow up. Hey, I live in Texas. I know all about that. Right. Yes. So you can see that everywhere, but it's everywhere. It's pervasive. And, you know, if I can't, Um, If I can't get what I want right now, I'll just turn on Netflix. And then if I can't get the internet, then I'll find something else and I'll do this and that. And I'm just filling up all the space that was in waiting in that silence and that patience in that, that beautiful quietness has somehow just evaporated. Well, here's the kicker to all this. It's not just that I'm fascinated by it. I want listeners to understand that because the bar is so low it's so easy to be inconvenienced 
that's why there's so few great people now in the world that you can be great. Now yes. is the time. Yes. So my point is <laughs> take, start the thing. Yes. Write that book finally, you know, launch that podcast, start yes. that business, meet that person, send that email, yeah. make that phone call. Now you might think it's more difficult, but I'm now the- is the opening. Now is the opening. And now is the time. You better step in. Now is the time for you to step in. So this is, you know, this is, you have shared so many like jewels. I'm going to go back and listen to this over and over again for myself because, and listeners, I hope you will too, because we are talking about just really simple processes for you to get out and get your brand solidified so that you can be known and trusted and then you can make money doing what it is that you love, which is, I know what people want, right? And this piece that Ram is saying right now, he's saying, listen, you got to go and do this now. Don't wait because the bar is really low. And so everybody is easily inconvenient. So step on in there because there's, you're going to be able to solve somebody's problem right away, right away. Because the problems are, are really simple now. <laughs> They're really simple. So tell me, you know, from your perspective, you gave a lot of tips, but tell me what, what would be, so let's say somebody's sitting listening and they're thinking, oh, I don't know, you know, can I go out and do, hmm? um, what would you say to them about this? You, you said this about the now, but what, what steps do you think that they might consider as they go out? Okay. You mentioned a few, but say them again, if you would. Well, I'll give you one framework that I designed for decision-making specifically, because yes. I consider myself a decision-making business coach specializing in rapid decision-making specifically. And I, cre- I created a framework that everyone can use and they can check out my website if they want the diagram or my Instagram. It's, it's yes, all there. Yes, it's, it's all a- there. And it'll be in the show notes too. So look down there. Absolutely. And take this, you know, this framework, which, I, which I've coined the lightning bolt method, it's a rapid decision-making framework. So it's helped me with both micro and macro decision-making from deciding what to cook for, to dinner, for dinner or to, to business ideas. Oh, I love deals it. To, All right. I'm ready. To I'm ready. <laughs> future transport experiences as well, right? I actually designed, designed stage one of what the next 10 years of New South Wales trains look like. And so um, it's a three-part fantastic. sequence. Okay, I'm ready. Yes. So you start here. Interrogate your objectives. Okay. That's the first bucket. Interrogate your objectives. All right, got it. Get your objectives and I'll, and I'll expand in a little bit, but we've got these three main buckets. Interrogate your objectives. Number two is curate your criteria. Yes. And number three is dismantle obstacles. Okay. So the interrogate objectives is that, you know, we're not in a shortage of having an objective, a goal, a dream. We want many things. <laughs> I don't think that's uh, the problem. No, Patty, it's right? not. It's not. Yes. I think the, 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 the issue is that we don't interrogate it. We identify so many that that's part of the problem, first of all. So yes. we need to interrogate which objectives are you know, going to be really meaningful for you yes. and interrogate them. I... I um, define interrogate objectives as this. What is the minimum viable intention? The minimum viable intention. So I want what to happen, you know? Yes. So start there. Like I said to you, my intention was to help. Actually, about the beginning, it was just to help designers get a job. Right. So now I'm not tied to if it turns into a speaking engagement or you're or teaching career. online or you're doing whatever. Online, right. Exactly. Ebook, audio book, yeah. paperback, what podcast, the- whatever. Right. Exactly. So interrogate it, interrogate the objectives. Don't just identify it, interrogate it down to the minimum viable intention. Just the, yes, the, the intention minimum viable intention. viable intention. So the simplest, simplest, right? The simplest. In clearest the and it, we're talking about specific it. and clear thank you correct that's one the second is curate criteria which is 
being brutally honest with your non-negotiables. That's it. So with, with the criteria, the problem that I've often found is that, or A, sometimes there's, there's not even a criteria, but, but there's, there's so many maybes or I want it to be like this. No, 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 non-negotiables. You want to take that job? You've got, you, what are your non-negotiables? You've got a newborn, you need to clock off at five. That's a non-negotiable. Yes. You can't work weekends. That's a non-negotiable. That's right. Uh, you've, you've got a certain limitation or comfort around how far you're willing to tra- travel. Specify that. Yes. That's a non-negotiable. Yes. Yes, and you can see like, on the in the Amazon ads that are on right now, that's what they're appealing to. That's what they're appealing absolutely. to. Absolutely. The non-negotiables, you know, right? Um, absolutely. I'm I'm advising these two founders. They're um two dads with three kids each, and they both work full time. And when I said to them, All right, you've got this new startup, it's kind of like Airbnb for backyards. Yes. And they're like, We're willing to throw everything into it, time, money, energy, you name it. And I go, Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you have three Let's kids. Just, let, let me <laughs> just question realistic. that for a second. <laughs> yes. They yeah. didn't have all the time in the world. No. Said, what's, yes. What's the non-negotiable? They were like, well, every night, maybe one hour, maybe max. And then on weekends, <laughs> maybe like two hours, three hours. And I go, well, so you don't have all the time. Money, how much are you willing to spend on it? They said collectively like 35000 uh, for <laughs> the first sort of milestone. I go, that's not an unlimited amount of resources, is it? No. And, and energy, they, they looked tired. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's like, so curate your criteria. What are right, your non-negotiables? Good. Be brutally honest. And the third bucket is dismantling obstacles, which basically just comes down to pull it apart. Yes. Here are the things stopping me from getting to that. Write them all down. Pull it apart and search for the, the source of it, the root cause. Yes. Because Patty, often it's, might be even internal. It might yeah. be mindset. Yeah, I was thinking lines. I was thinking limiting belief. Might be limiting beliefs, but we've got to list all these things down so yes. that we're able to pair a specific yes. person yes. or tool to just tackle that root cause. Yes. Right. And some people say to me, Ram, I'm not great at Adobe Creative Suite. Now there's Figma. Now there's all these tools like Miro board <laughs> and this that. And I'm like, I'm like, what do you want it to do? They're like, oh, I just need, you know, a bit of animation. Exactly. It will constantly update. The technology will constantly go higher and higher. Yes. So yes. you just learn the minimum amount. Correct. What does that look like? Yes. Basics, intermediate level. What does that look like? See, too many people get caught up and they don't yeah. address and measure. Yes. And so this hopefully will help people yeah. uh, get unstuck huh. lightning fast. Well, and I would say that is a lightning bolt right there. Kaboom. Really, this is a very simple three-step process. You can use it anytime that you're thinking about changing anything in your life, in your world, in, or what you're going to eat for that, that evening. Well, even the other day, I was like, I was like, (laughs) Hey, Dal, what are we going to eat? And then, so my minimum viable intention was to just cook a healthy meal. Right. And something that wasn't going to, to take you know, half an hour. That's the so parameters. It was, so it was, you know, um, simple protein and veggies. Like, and, and then, and, and, you know, what was stopping me was like, okay, all these ingredients, I don't have this, this, this. Well, you know, I've got salt and pepper, that'll do. You know, <laughs> well, you know like it was, so I had, again, it's just when you yep. go through it, the criteria yeah. was this, my wife didn't yeah. care. She was just tired. She just wanted, you know, something. Yeah. Right? Can you Sometimes feed me? We, right. I love that. Yeah. Yes, you yes, know? I know. My wife was that way last <laughs> night. She goes, can't we just have eggs? And then you cut some vegetables and put it in. And I go, no problem. Got it. Now it's solved. Now we don't have to worry about, we don't have to think about where we're going or ordering or going to the grocery store or anything like that. It's all done because it's really the smallest and simplest and specific. And then we just take away the obstacle whatever That's perceived right. obstacle there is. I love that. You, you are so fantastic. I, I could talk to you all day long. I really could. And I hope I get to again. I hope that Thank you'll you, come Patty. back and you'll tell me everything else that you've learned about the world. And then I can ask you about the other ventures that you started, you know, by just going to the tennis court or maybe going to the Tesla lot or whatever it was that you were doing your latest thing that you're just experimenting with, because why not? Now you're not in lockdown in the same way. I don't think, are you still locked down there? 
Not in the same no, way. No, free. Yay, woo, free at last, <laughs> free at last. I love it. Okay, good. Well, thank you so much for everything that you poured into us because in this podcast, I mean it, I'm serious. I'm gonna to listen to it over and over again because there was so much good thinking around you and your brand. And so I thank you for being here. And everybody who's listening, please follow him. His podcast is called The Giant Thinker. And um, it's singular, right? The Giant Thinker. And just want to say, we want to get him back into number three status. So go in there, follow him. He's on Apple, Spotify. He's probably everywhere with his podcast. So just, just follow him on Instagram, same, same handle. They're also in the show notes. You can find him on Clubhouse in this room and that room, mostly around creativity. And I just can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, the podcast is available there for anyone. It, it's called uh, Giant Thinkers. My handle is The Giant Thinker, so I'm, I'm that on everywhere. Um, I'd love to hear from you, you know, continue the conversation. And and it's just about that, you know, planting many seeds. And, and Patty, I am so grateful to be on your show. You're an absolute rock star. Oh, uh, you, you are a beam of light and, and a gift uh, <laughs> to all of us, honestly, from- like... One beam to the other there, I'm just saying. So anyone yeah, you, who's got, listening in, you know, yeah. just just put all of his great wisdom into your life. Try it and test it. See what parts work for you because this is a simple process that will just explode everything that you have thought was hard to do. You'll be able to do it. I just know you will. So to everybody that's tuning in, you know, what I'm saying to you is go out there, be your best self, bring good things to the world because we need you now more than ever. Don't mess around, get in, step into your brand, go out, kaboom the world. And until next time, up your creative genius. Thanks again. Thanks for coming on, Rom. I love you. Thanks, Patty. Big love. Thank you so much.